Hey friends, thanks for tuning back into my channel. My name is Jocelyn. I know in the last video we talked about how we're going to be heading more in the direction of biology and kind of moving up to that next phase for the information and relating biology to law of attraction. But I wanted to make one more video just on this other information before we move on to that next step and really diving into biology and the steps there and relating that to law of attraction. So this video, I wanted to specifically talk about light. We hear all these spiritual gurus and leaders say that we are made of light. We are made of, of energy and vibration. And what does that actually mean? It is very much so true, but there's kind of an aspect to it that I didn't always believe whenever I heard it from them. So here's the kind of scientific breakdown of we are made of light. All the information that we have and know of in the universe travels in the form of light. You and I are made up of light. We're made up of heat and energy and, like I've said, vibrations and all of these things because the average human is made up of about 7 times 10 to the 27th atoms. So always keep that number in mind. It really keeps it into perspective how much we really truly are made of light and energy. Light travels in the form of waves. Now, a wave will have what is called a wave length to it. And I want you to picture a wave out on the water. This is a really great way to kind of get this whole perspective in mind and really to dive into the energy and vibration that is around light. Think of that wave on the ocean, on the water. Obviously, there's these ripples, there's these waves that create, there's this momentum that gathers between all of the waves, and then that's why there's this huge wave that's emitted for, like, surfers to surf on and such. So let's talk about kind of the nitty-gritty details of a wave. Like I said, a wave has what is called a wavelength, and the very top portion of a wave is what's called the wave crest. And when it dips back down, it's called the wave trough. Now, when two crests come together, they create an even bigger crest. And when two troughs come together, they create an even bigger trough. But when a crest and a trough come together, when those two meet, they will cancel each other out. The wave just kind of dissipates from there. Knowing that information, that is actually the way that we can tell how much energy is behind a light wave, is its amount of color and the distance of the wavelength. The, the wavelength is measured from one top of one crest to the next wave crest. So that measurement right there, that is what is called a wavelength. Now, light will be tied and the amount of energy that it has is going to be tied to the length of its wavelength and to the color that it's emitting. So we have what's called the electromagnetic spectrum and we have these colors that they're all we're all aware of. At the very highest color the very highest energy is violet. Violet will have a shorter wavelength which means it has a higher amount of energy. And then as we go down in colors, like down to blue, um, green, yellow, orange, and red, the, the wavelength will get longer. And then we can also, again, tell the amount of energy that light has according to its color. So if we go to the opposite end of violet, which is red, red is going to have the longest wavelength and it's going to have the lowest amount of energy. This is also tied to its temperature. The color violet is going to have an even hotter temperature more than red. Red is going to have a lower temperature. And a good way to think about this is looking at like the flame of a fire. If you really look at the flames, you can kind of see that down at the core there's these these higher amounts of energy since it's so much closer to the source of the heat it's going to be more like violet and blue and those higher energy colors which means that they're going to have shorter wavelengths as opposed to as the flame comes out it becomes more like an orangish red which means that 
even though it's still really hot to us humans, it actually has a lower amount of heat and energy or a longer wavelength, okay? So kind of keep that perspective in mind. So knowing those basics, now that we kind of know that information, I want to talk about something kind of random. We're going to kind of go away from the science part a little bit and we're going to talk about emotions and how they're specifically tied to wavelengths because this is really going to help dial in the biology portion that we're going to dive into in the next video. People that are aware of vibrations and how they're tied to emotions will kind of be familiar with a popular uh, image and you can probably google this vibrational scale of emotions and you'll kind of see this funnel pop up like this kind of ice cream cone looking thing and it's got at the bottom of the spectrum red and then it kind of moves up that color spectrum to where violet is at the very top of that color spectrum the highest amount of energy now the emotions are directly correlated with those colors So we can kind of feel that as well, being humans, when we experience emotions like shame, guilt, or fear, and especially like depression, we have a low, low, low amount of energy, and especially with depression, that's moments when you can't even pull yourself out of your room, you know, out of bed, you have a very, very low amount of energy. But there is this kind of evolution of emotions as we move up this vibrational scale. And so the next ones that you would come across would be emotions that would be tied a little bit more with the color orange and then yellow. So we move up in colors and that's where we also move up in emotions. So yellow and things like that would be more correlated with anger because there's actually some movement to anger. There's there's like some energy to it. There's a movement from depression and fear and shame and guilt to actually wanting movement. So anger is actually a really good thing. It's going to move you up that vibrational scale of emotions. So that's why it's directly tied a little bit more to like an orangish or a yellow type of energy because it might not have the highest amount of energy like love, peace, joy, enlightenment but it still is going to get you some movement, get you moving up that vibrational scale of emotions. Now, the next ones that you would move into are more like with a green color, which would be more of like a neutrality or acceptance or willingness. And once you're able to get to those higher colors, those higher vibrational emotions, you almost get sucked right into love, peace, joy, and enlightenment, which is amazing. So, it's important that we realize this because on a scientific level, I know that in the spiritual world, that's really popular. And we also experience that as humans, that we, we can feel that there's an energy tied to the emotions that we experience. When we feel love and peace and joy, there's, there's like this energy to it where you just want to run around and you want to do things for other people and you, wanna, you want to be with other people and kind of share that excitement and that energy. So we can kind of feel that there's an energy correlated with the emotions. But the reason specifically why I wanted to bring up science and mix it, mixing it with that spirituality aspect a little bit is because I want to talk, I want to lead into the next video where we talk about specifically brain chemicals and molecules, how they are tied to that as well, because that's really going to bring the information together and make a lot more sense. So... Let's talk about that specifically. We know that there are all these really specific brain chemicals that we're all aware of. There's dopamine, there's serotonin. Those are kind of like our feel-good emotions. We also have brain chemicals such as cortisol or norepinephrine or adrenaline, those ones which are a little bit more linked to stress and fear and those type of emotions. And what's fascinating is that there are also, we produce cannabinoids in our brain. That's another brain chemical that our brain produces. And we also have opioids. Opioids are going to be specifically correlated to like pain relief. That's why we have such an opioid epidemic on our hands right now is because people are wanting to be numbed from that pain so much. And then on the other side with cannabinoids, of course, that's also directly related to not only like digestion and getting those type of things moving, but it's also correlated to pain relief as well. The really interesting thing about brain chemicals is that 
They are atoms that have come together to create molecules and then to create this brain chemical in our brain. But even further than that, the molecules come together and they create amino acids. That is what brain chemicals are made up of. So your, your brain chemicals, your, your, um, the amino acids that specifically come together to create all these really specific chemicals in your brain, they have a vibration to them because they are made up of atoms which come together to create molecules. We know especially after the last video I talked about how atoms, the way that they receive their energy is from photons of light in their outside environment. So it's the same thing with brain chemicals. It's just that your brain, your thoughts are what are producing the brain chemicals in your hypothalamus, in your brain. So now that we know that, let's, I want to talk about specifically what happens. So we know that the, your thoughts will produce a brain chemical that is like an emotion and it gets created like i said in the hypothalamus in your brain so what happens in there is your hypothalamus will create that brain chemical that very specific one and this can be a, a very particular combination of brain chemicals i mean if you think about a very specific thought or belief that you have which a belief is just a thought that has been repeated over and over and over again. It's been passed down to us from our parents and people like that from generation to generation. So when you start thinking about it in that way, your, your thoughts, your beliefs have very specific brain chemicals tied to them. Very, very unique combinations of brain chemicals. So let's say for instance, okay, this is where it gets really fascinating. Let's say that you grew up in an environment where things were kind of like a roller coaster with your parents, your siblings, everyone around you. And you would experience really intense moments of joy and peace and love. And then on the opposite of the extreme, maybe you had a mother or a father that would like scream out at you out of nowhere. So you could have this really big high and then all of a sudden crash down to this really extreme low, this like scary moment where maybe you're releasing these brain chemicals like cortisol or adrenaline because you're, you're trying to handle that fear that is in front of you in that moment. So what happens is you will continue to go throughout life repeating those thoughts. Those same exact thoughts will come up over and over and over again because we repeat those same thoughts thoughts over and over and over again and if that is the specific relationship that you were raised to see in your environment then that is typically the relationship that you will continue to attract based off of your thoughts so then the relationships around you will continue to repeat that same exact combination of brain chemicals that you experienced when you were younger I hope I hope you're following so far because this is this is really interesting to think about on the on a kind of different side of law of attraction. This, so say when you were younger, you went through something really traumatic. Like I've said, you know, maybe you had some type of like abuse in some way, sexual, physical, any way. So you will continue to attract that same experience in your relationships until that aspect is is confronted in your reality and healed and the most important thing is dissociated from because at the core of you you are light you are atoms and energy and vibrations and that thought that experience is not who you are at all it's just a brain chemical with a very specific amount of energy with probably a lower amount of energy that was released inside of you and now has become stuck energy within your body. And that is why we keep repeating those experiences over and over and over again. So if you are to this day experiencing those same type of emotions where say at the beginning of the relationship, it's, it's like amazing. It's like cloud nine. It's, it's almost unbelievable that this relationship could be so so dreamy like such a completion of us as a human being 
and then all of a sudden it takes a really intense crash, that is going to specifically mean that it is tied to a belief that you have, to a thought that you have, because you are thinking that is a stuck belief that has been kind of programmed in the neural net in your brain, and it's just triggering those same exact brain chemicals that you produced when you were younger. So I hope that's kind of making sense so far. I just wanted to make this short video kind of going over some of those basics because like I said, we're going to dive into biology in the next video. That's where we're really going to talk about the cells and what happens with those brain chemicals when, when they enter the cells. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the information. I'm so excited to do the next video and I hope you guys will join me there. And yeah, I hope I'll see you there. Thank you.